Amen. Amen. Can I get one more song? I saw it. 190. By a show of hands, we're going to do this decently and in order. By God's grace. 190. Oh 
is in love. Praise God for his amazing love. He died for you and he died for me. Now we're going to transition to our health message for this morning. Not yet. Not just yet. Praise God. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. He's doing. And he's going to continue to do. This morning, by God's grace, I will be your health presenter for this morning. Pray my strength in the Lord. Pray my strength in the Lord. Thank you, my dear. Praise God. You know, it's been a journey. And the Lord has a way of doing things. When the Lord impresses on your heart to do a work for him, don't look left, don't look right, but look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. I'm, my little disclaimer, I don't know everything. I am shaking. But I pray that the Lord will take away this fear and that you guys can help me as we present the message here this morning. But before we begin, let's pray that the Holy Spirit will have his way. Amen. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Father, Lord, have thine own way. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I come, a broken vessel, who truly want to be used by you. Father, I ask that you will allow your Holy Spirit to truly fall afresh upon me. Take away this fear, Lord, because you promised that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a strong mind. And I ask for the mind of Christ Jesus to be in me this morning. That as I share this message with your children, Lord, those near and far, and those that are here, we will hear the voice of Jesus through these words. This is the way, walking in it. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to help us to see our need to truly serve you in spirit and truth. Forgive us where we have failed you and fallen short, especially me, Kamara. Lord, I ask for the boldness to speak and speak to your name's honor and glory. Thank you for what you have done. 
what you're doing and what you're continuing to do. I ask these things in no other name than the name of your son, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayer. Amen. Before we begin, let's sing our health theme song. begin with me. Our theme for this morning is food hygiene, as you have seen on the screen. I pray that I would present it, that even the smallest child here can understand. Our first scripture this morning is 1 Corinthians 3 and 17, and it says, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple are ye? Which temple are ye this morning? What is food hygiene? Food hygiene is a collection of practices and guidelines to keep your operations clean and under healthy conditions. This term is concerned with food handling, transport, proper storage of food, and the actual processing of your materials. As an important part of food safety and ensuring the health and well-being of consumers, food hygiene is the practice of handling, preparing, and storing food in a way that pre prevents foodborne illnesses. Also, it, it's a set of guidelines designed to, keep, designed to keep food safe from contamination and spoilage. So here's the definition, you know, we got this from off the internet. They help us to understand ways and why food hygiene is very important. Here are a few ways to maintain good food hygiene. Now, I know there are so, so much more than this, but this is my little few, you know, just being temperate in things. Clean always. Wash your food, hands, counters, and cooking tools. Wash hands in warm soapy water for at least 20 seconds. Wash your cutting boards, your dishes, your forks, spoons, knives, and countertops with hot, soapy water. Rinse fruits and veggies. Now, they had the other things, right? Like the meats and stuff, but I'm going to stay kosherized with us. The fruits and the veggies, as it was given to us from the beginning in Genesis 1 and 29, fruits, green and nuts. And the veggies came after, you know, because of sin. to help to purify the blood. Clean, cook, chill, and prevent cross-contamination. Now, here is a picture. I don't know if you can see it so good, but it has a different variety of stuff on it. You know, it has, thank you very much, it has like the fruits, it has meats on it, it has greens, and 
eggs and all those other stuff. When preparing foods, we are to be careful not to cross contaminate things because it can truly cause sickness and it can probably even lead up to death by causing different stuff to mix. And we know that, as I said earlier, as persons of the Seventh-day Adventist faith, we truly believe in a health message that we ought to eat as God called us to, and he has prepared our bodies in a way that if we eat what he said that we should eat, we would be free from all contamination of food. So it's just a little picture to show you, show you what not to do, especially like those who still eat the meat at times, you know, not to put it with the different variety of food so it wouldn't cause contamination. Food contamination. Different types of hazards that affect your food and health. Start with the chemical. Substances used to clean kitchen surfaces and appliances or as pesticides can be very harmful if spilt near food or mistaken as food or drink. So, you know, some of us, when we cleaning, you want to have the detergent somewhere or the bleach close to it. No, you got to be careful not to have none of these things or don't even spray when you see the fly in the hose. Try kill it as I know someone does with the little thing. You will see a little swapper or something. Yeah, get them. You don't try spray around because the foods will be contaminated. You know, some of us, you know, we, we just learning some of these things. So we, we did it in the past, but today you don't do it no more. All right? Praise God. A biological. Tasteless microorganisms, toxins, and parasitic worms that remain dangerous even when cooked. Now, many of us have heard in time past of the past health lectures that this pork has this worm that doesn't die. And that we, we should not even be partaking of it. The Lord said, don't even touch it. You know, so they say, and say, even when it cook, the thing's still living. So imagine what it does when it goes into you. Yes, it still lives when, even when it cook. So stay away from that, you know, by God's grace. Physical, foreign matters such as hair, and that's why it's important to have your hair net and stuff, you know, for some of us who have them rough hair and thing with always coming out. Yeah, you know, and with, you know, keep your hair tied down. So the hair, like, again, dead insects, like when you kill the fly and thing, be careful where you swap it, because it might just go in the pot. And you ain't going to be eating that, because they some of the nastiest creatures and insects we know. The jewelry, you know, we don't have, I don't think we should have issue wearing jewelry, but some, of, some other persons do, but jewelry, hands, hearts of glass and bits of metal can physically injure people when eaten and can introduce harmful bacteria into food. So I don't know if any of you here have ever been to do a, when you have to go do them health classes, thank you. Um, you cannot even go there with some of your jewelry and thing on. Because I remember one time I did it and you know, you can't go there. So even if you go there, you fail because they say now you ain't properly prepared to present or prepare things for people. So we have to stay away from these things. And you know, the Lord tell us, we don't have to put these on. We beautiful, we are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Amen. You know, some of us mightn't be as tall or handsome or pretty as others, but we are made fearfully and wonderfully by God. Amen. You know, so don't mind someone talking about you ugly. Tell them, I am fearfully and wonderfully made by God. All right? So we want to stay away from this, this green man right here on the picture. Y'all can see him? You know, so that's why it say you have to check your food. Make sure that it's clean. And you separate things. That's where we don't get the cross-contamination. You separate it. 
cook those things what truly needs to be cooked properly. Make sure it is done. You know, some of us, we, we want pick out the pot before it's done. Be careful because some things are not to be eaten raw. You have to make sure that it's cooked. And then, you know, you chill some things. And then what needs to be thrown away? Discard of it. Okay? Now I have an X text on the screen. I'm going to put it there in a minute. When doing the study, I couldn't, like, find something that would help me with, you know, as the Bible would give us understanding of certain things. Now, some things would come into mind, but I didn't see how to really put it together. So if someone can help me um, as I place this, um, the text on the screen to elaborate why, um, how this can tie in, you can help me with it. And it's coming from Leviticus chapter 3 and verse 17. Now, if you read the text, it, was, it talks about sacrifice, right? The, how we would sacrifice and do things. But the last part of it, I somewhat thought that it would help with food hygiene because the Lord says in Leviticus 3.17, Brother Sean, you think you can elaborate some on this, something for me? if you can, or anybody else. Um, it was like, it shall be a perpetual statute for your generations throughout all your dwelling that ye eat neither fat or blood. And reason why I would say the fat and the blood because I know that it causes diseases and stuff, and it would affect us if we would truly eat fat and blood with our food. Brother Shannon? Well, if you're talking about cross-contamination, one of the things that we have to be concerned about is when our food actually come into contact with these things. Because let's say if the animal does have a disease, it is predominantly stored either in the blood, that's why anytime they're searching for a sickness in the human body, they would take the blood and then they would examine the blood to find out what you have. The next thing is when we have harmful chemicals in our body, when the liver can't break it down, it stores it as fat because it doesn't know what to do it. And that's why some persons, when they gain a lot of weight um, through eating bad food and then they start losing weight, they get really, really sick. And the reason for that is as you start to um, lose the weight, which is like you start getting rid of the fat, now the chemicals is now being dumped into your blood, and if you're not drinking a lot of water to flush it out, then you feel this serious sickness. Now, the reason we should be concerned about the cross-contamination, as stated earlier, is when most meat that we're dealing with have the blood and the fat in it. So that means that poison or sickness that was in the blood or that was in the fat is there. So when your fruits come into contact with this, fruits or vegetables come into contact with that blood and fat, that is now being transferred over onto your plant. And because we eat a lot of plants raw, then you know a lot of that sickness isn't being burnt off or killed. And then we end up ingesting it and getting sick. That's why we probably should be careful of some of those health food places, well, so, sorry, not some of those health food places, but some of those places that serve meats and um, foods for vegetarians. And this is why even in the past, I think there were some fast food restaurants that people take them to court because they find out that they were cooking supposedly healthy food or vegetarian food in the same, on the same pots that they were cooking the meat products. And that way the lawsuit came in. Now they obviously they lose because the health food store never said that we will cook food on a separate place or prepare food in a separate area as opposed to where we prepare the meat. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. That's why we all need one another. Right? Amen. Praise God. Now this is coming from Consults and Health. You know, we always we have a prophet that the Lord has 
awaken for us in these times that we will be edified even sometimes when we cannot fully understand certain things she breaks it down so simple that we all can truly get a better knowledge of what is happening there is a class who seem to think that whatever is eaten is lost that anything tossed into the stomach to fill it will do as well as food prepared with intelligence and care. But it is important that we relish the food we eat. We cannot and have to eat, we cannot. And thank you. If we cannot and have to eat mechanically, we fail to receive the proper nourishment. Our bodies are constructed from what we eat. And in order to make tissues of good quality, we must have the right kind of food. And it must be prepared with such skill as will best adapt it to the wants of the system. That is Consult on Health, page 116, paragraph 3, as we continue. It is a religious duty for those who cook to learn how to prepare healthful food in a variety of ways so that it may be both palatable and healthful. Poor cookery is wearing away the life energies of thousands. More souls are lost from this cause than many relies. It deranges the system and produces diseases. In the condition thus induced, heavenly things cannot be readily discerned. And we see this, this lady here, I don't know what she's doing, but it seems like her part is on fire and she ain't know what to do. But she's getting rid of that food which will cause disease or harm any one of us who go to her restaurant. We have a question at the back. Good morning, happy Sabbath. It's not so much as a question, sis, but when we look at the ending of three point three here, it is bringing out the fact that it is a religious duty. I would like for you to emphasize and how it is connected to our eternal laws, because I think most of us don't realize and know that our eating is also in connection with our eternal way of glory. So uh, it, it, it seems to me as if you're moving too fast over that point. Let's, by God's grace, and, uh, and I'm, if you need Shannon again, <laughs> we, we will put him on the spot to emphasize that because we need to understand that eating affects our soul salvation. Amen. And point taken, sir. Because um, you know you have persons today, even even in our churches that don't believe, and I'm talking about the Seventh Day Adventist Church, that eating has a part to play with our soul salvation. So I'll read it again, Sister Janice. You had a point. Yes. Um, back to the fat and the blood thing. Amazingly, we overlook too that a lot of us. Well, can I just ask the audience, please? How many of us cook with cooking oils when we cook? Just, just by a show of hands. Is that considered fat? I think Is cooking oil considered some fat? Some of them are like healthy fats. Or stuff. Okay, so wait now, wait now. We, uh, we, we go to the food store and we purchase the oil, and it says clay on it, hydrogenated oil. Hydrogenated oil is not a good product for us to be using, but we all use it. Okay, that's one, that's one part of it. Then the other thing is butter. We use butter on our foods now and again, okay? But that's also not a healthy thing, and anything in excess is also really not good for us. And so when we look at it, the things, the way we cook, I, I saw the demonstration of the lady running with the food. It's now we need to adopt a different way to prepare our foods so that it will be more healthful for our body cells and not do so much more damage. I don't know if anybody realizes that when you cook with cooking oil now, it's like you have a regurgitation of a 
flux coming back up. And maybe because we've been trained or accustomed to eating this over so many years of our lives that we don't know any different. And so we feel like that's the only way you can prepare your food. But now I'm learning now to, instead of using oils, find a way to cook it without oil and do it and get a, a different flavor. Simple things, lemons, um, uh, lemongrass, um, herbs, and just flavor the water as opposed to cooking with oil, use something else. Even if it's a juice from a fruit or something. But all these little things have changed the way you feel, how your body digests the food, all these different things. Uh, the, I've, I've noticed it, that's why I have to change my way of cooking. Oil is totally out of my diet now. Thank you so much. It is a religious duty for those who cook to learn how to prepare healthful food in a variety of ways so that it may be both palatable and helpful. Poor cookery is wearing away the life energies of thousands. More souls are lost from this cause than many realize. It deranges the system and produces disease in the condition thus induced. And at the bottom, it says, heavenly things cannot be readily discerned. And, you know, it was said that, you know, when you eat the animal products, it causes you to act in a way that the animals act. And it beclouds your mind, so your thinking is not as clear. So when someone truly comes to you with text, scripture, whatever they come to you with, because your mind is so clouded, you cannot truly understand. And when person's now presenting a health message to you, you think, oh, Lord say eat the clean meats or this and that, what he says in Leviticus, but was it truly the way that we should have been eaten from the beginning? And these things causes us to go contrary to what the Lord has for us, and as the Holy Spirit now impeaches on us to impress us on our heart that, hey, you can get rid of this. You're fighting because now your mind is not clear because of things that you have put into your system, and that's why it says heavenly things cannot be readily discerned. Brother Dorset, do you see on me, please? <laughs> Getting there by God's grace. So I pray that that can help. Or Brother Sean, you want to add anything? You can go ahead, please. Brother Sanders, you had something to say? Great. I didn't saw you, so I'm, I apologize. Yeah, concerning the last point, where, at least not the last point, the part talking about it's a religious duty for those to cook. When you look at Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14 and 15, because a lot of persons would say, well, oh, that's what Ellen White says, but what does the Bible say? So let's see where she got this, uh, where this idea came from. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14 and 15. Now we know it's talking about Jesus based on verse 14. It says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. So we notice text is talking about Christ. Now notice verse 15. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good, which brings us back to that last sentence which says, In the condition thus induced, heavenly things cannot be discerned. So if you're not eating properly, heavenly things can't be discerned. And based on the prophecy of Isaiah concerning Jesus, he'll have a specific diet so that he may refuse the evil and choose the good. Amen. So based on this same fact, we know that eating has an effect on salvation. Amen. It also has an effect on whether we can 
discern, as the text says, heavenly things. So you are correct in that, and that's the Bible verse I believe she based that on. Amen. Praise the Lord. And what came to mind also as you were speaking, you know, when the angel went to Manoah and his wife about Samson, they also told them what not to eat and what to partake of, because, and even with John the Baptist, because these persons were persons to be channeled channels used by God so if you had um, partaken of the wine or whatever you shouldn't have it may have affected the child and that his understanding or even if you have a daughter her understanding would not be in comprehension with the word of God and how she should or he should be led yeah because the sister asked me this week well how come if we're fearfully and wonderfully made you have children borning with these birth defects. Now, I believe that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, like you said, and the scripture bears that out. If the scripture says it, we believe it. Yes, sir. But even so, there is a point where we push things too far, and as a result of it, we have these issues. And you brought up a wonderful point with Manoah, um, even with Samson's mother, no, Samuel's mother, and Elizabeth, John the Baptist mummy. All of them had to eat in a specific way, and the question we need to ask ourselves, why is it that God say, only eat this particular way? It tells me that the way that they eat affects these children. Yeah, exactly. We say that children learn at a very young age, but we, doctors are um, discovering and scientists are discovering that children start learning from it in the womb. Yeah. Like some mothers who listen to classical music, they find out that their children when they start hearing classical music, very in tune to it, like they're drawn towards it. So parents kind of pave the road for where these children gonna head or which direction these children gonna head, starting from the womb. And that's why they have to be careful as to what you eat, and even males too, because during the getting the sister pregnant period, if he's eating unhealthy or he's drinking or smoking, that affects his seed that he's going to pass on to that woman. And that the child even have birth defects because of those things. So it's like a two-person thing where the fathers have to eat healthy. And the, for that, that period of time, actually you should be doing it throughout your life because you need to know how to raise the child properly. Yeah. The Bible says train up the child in the way they should go. If you're eating he um, healthy, you, you don't understand everything. thing. So you can't do that. But then the mother throughout that pregnancy period have to do the same thing, including when she's breastfeeding, because all of that is passed on. Amen. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. The Lord works all things out for you. Amen. Continuing in Councils of Health, um, chap page 117, chapter 1, it says, paragraph 1, thank you, ma'am. Some do not feel that it is a religious duty, once again, the religious duty. We'll take my time, Brother Dawson. Got you on this one. Some do not feel that it is a religious duty to prepare food properly. Hence, they do not try to learn how. As Sister Janice mentioned, in some ways that we can use different things to prepare our foods. They let the bread sour before bacon. And the sal sal salaterous added to remedy the cook's carelessness makes it totally unfit for the human stomach. It requires thought and care to make good bread. Some of us are still learning. But there is more religion in a good loaf of bread than many think. You see that? How, how could, in making bread, you know, it, but there is more religion. There's something with making the bread properly. So ladies, even gents, let's by God's grace pray for that Holy Spirit. So when we go to make these bread and whatever food, that we would have the Spirit of God dwelling with us so that as we prepare it, it will do good to the bodies that will consume it and persons will glorify God because the taste would be far more magnificent than we would ever think that it can be. 
food can be prepared simply and healthfully, but it requires skill to make it both flattable and nourishing. You know, sometimes, you know, we cook some of these food, they be like, only by the grace of God I eat this because I'm hungry. We got to learn, sisters and brothers. We have to learn. The don't only thing the women cook now, some of you men, because when the lady is pregnant with your child, what you going to do? You're just going to make some noodles, and we're supposed to be getting away from some of these things. So the, the things in the noodles ain't good for us. So what you going to do? You got to learn too. So to get us, Lord said, when he joined us together, being one, learn from the wife and the husband. We can get to some more things. In order to learn how to cook, woman should study. Now, they say woman now, but you men, don't boast yourself. In order to learn how to cook, women should study, then patiently reduce what they learn to practice. So we got to practice, as I say, practice what you preach, practice when you're learning these cooking methods. You know, Sister Marlene has a program. There's other programs, but Sister Marlene has programs, and she teach you how to put certain things together. Like, I just do something for somebody, and they like it. Practice. It's going to come out. I didn't know how to do it either. But by the grace of God. People are suffering because they will not take the trouble to do this. And that's learning how to properly prepare things. I say to such, it is time for you to rouse your dormant energies and inform yourselves week after week. Sometimes we have the little video by Barbara O'Neill, Sister Marlene come, and even our former health lecturers, praying God will have his way in that situation too, that we had learned, we were taught many things. So as we were informed, let us by God's grace put it to practice. Do not think the time wasted do not think the time wasted which is devoted to obtaining a thorough knowledge and experience in the preparation of healthful, palatable food. It's all right, by God's grace. We know it's supposed to be good for the plate. Once the plate is pleasing and it nourishes in the body, <laughs> no matter how long an experience you have had in cooking, if you still have the responsibilities of a family, it is your duty. It's your duty? Your duty, my duty, to learn how to care for them properly. And that's why the food contamination and the way that we do things, you know, you just don't go pick up the cabbage and throw it straight in the pot. All of these things have to wash. The vegetables and things that we cook, the tofu, still wash it off, you know? Don't just throw it in the pot. You know, some of us, we, we be hungry. I, I ready to eat. And you, you, you just make, make yourself sick by doing, not doing things properly. If necessary, if necessary for those who want to learn, like myself, as I have someone, Lord of mercy, but if necessary, go to some good cook and put yourself under her instruction until you are mistress or master of the art. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Sister John? Um, so saying that, um, I remember when my, when, no, no love lost to anyone who does it. My mom used to open a bag of rice and dump it in the pot. Never washing the rice. And that, as I grew older and I realized that, hold on, a lot of people still doing this. I realized that is so nasty. <laughs> that is so, that's like not washing the peas, not washing the grits. You have to wash these things because these things are handled by so many different people and packaging and all these different things. And not only that, they have little worms on them. And if you don't wash those things, they won't float to the top. They say protein. 
that's what, that's what I was told. They say that's the protein for the for the meal. But no, you literally have to wash. I, I when I ask someone in the church, I used to attend. I asked, I said, how do you wash grits? And she said, you don't. And I'm like, you don't? And then I realized that, yes, you do, you should. You literally have to wash the grits too. Because the little black things that float to the top of it, some of it is worms, dead worms. Yes. And so that, so washing of the grits, washing of the rice, washing of the vegetables, even the lettuce, the tomatoes, not being able, uh, not mixing rotten foods with like, okay, if you pick up a bag of potatoes, and there's a one rotten potato, and then you have to wash the whole bag. Yeah. The whole, because the whole bag has got to have some effect from that one rotten potato. Yes. Same thing with the onion. And you have to leave it out to dry. So these little things I had to learn on my own as I grew older. But I remember when that was in the public, they used to just cut off the rotten part and continue cooking as usual. I thank God for his grace. Amen. And mercy. He says, at the time of ignorance, God winks. And he's teaching us all to you know, to prepare ourselves that we may come up a little bit higher, step by step. Sister Stacy. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Um, you know, I can truly laugh listening to Sister Jan. Now, that is something I am not always perfect with, uh, washing off the rice and the grits, truthfully. Um, but a good habit with when we purchase our fruits and our vegetables, it is best to get them all cleansed before we put them in the refrigerator. So as we're going to use them, they just go straight into our mouths or in the pots. And even so, too, because when they come in from the food store, we don't know what contaminants are on them, and we're contaminating our refrigerators. Thank you. Thank you. Brother Lorenzo, you still want to, you want to make that point? Okay, thank you. No problem. This is coming from Consult and Diets. Page 275, paragraph 4. In all the restaurants in our cities, there is danger that the combination of many foods in the dishes served shall be carried too far. As Brother Shannon mentioned earlier, like, you know, going to some places, because I could remember, you know, going up with some friends, you know, we went to this restaurant. And, you know, we trying to do the right thing and eat the right way. We ordered something, and I guess being the first one to bite into it, I was like, this seeing veggie, this seeing right. And all that night, I just was sucking my teeth in, ah, because it was actually chicken. And it was very bad, because even just the fact of tasting it, my mind then said, like, I could, like, I know it ain't my fault, but that's what it is my fault, because certain places I should not have been. And that's what we need to be very careful of. Even like Brother Shana mentioned, some persons, they might say, I cooking it in a different pot. Uh, but who knows what then being in that pot before and if they wash it. Because in most restaurants, and many of us who work around restaurants or work in restaurants can attest that these people ain't kosher eyes. So we have to be very, very careful. The stomach suffers when so many kinds of food are placed in at one meal. You know, some of us, we got to have our desserts, we got to have our fruits, we got to have our vegetables, and we were taught that we should not have fruits and vegetables at the same meal. So, because the enzymes, one cancel out the other. So we have to be very careful in how we put our food together. You know, I sorry I didn't have, um, I didn't put a, a balanced plate me um, on it, but we, we know by the things we are taught earlier that what we should have on our plate and what we shouldn't have on our plate. Simplicity is a part of health reform. We need health reform. We cannot run away from 
health reform. As it says, it plays a vital part in our salvation, which many don't think it does. We had the examples when Brother Shannon mentioned, even myself, with when children are coming into the world and what we do, it plays. And that's why we need to know as mothers, as fathers, the health message what the Lord has given to us from the Bible, from we know from the beginning, and even through his prophet, Sister Ellen G. White. We have to big up our prophet, you know, because the Rastas big up Selassie I. The other said big up the, the Mormon people, big up whoever they, 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 they prophet is. So why are we not bigging up our prophet and giving her the props as how God used her to present a message so vital for each and every one of us. There is a danger that our work shall cease to merit the name which it has borne. If we don't present the messages that God has given to us to present, it can be harmful to those even around us. The simple things we learn, we need to educate others. Like me, I, like I say, I, sometimes I can't even present things how I want to, but if you allow the Spirit of God to work in you as God says, I'll work in you both to will and to do of my good pleasure. If you tell somebody about the simple remedies or simple way to prepare food or how they can get back to where it started in Genesis, we would carry our work further in the world and more people will see the need of living healthier lives. Now, I have an X picture and it shows that where it says the combination of many foods. Now I, do, I did something simple, a picture it showed, because you know, some of us, we used to do these things. Now I, I don't think I ever do this one. But it's a little bagel with some cream cheese and your little cheese, you know, the fiery Cheetos. I used to like them pepper chip, you know, but this is something that we should not be doing. Uh, some of us might still like our little chips and stuff and things, and you might still put it on your cream cheese and your bagel. Um, I know, but if you're doing this, this is not good. You need to stop it because so much things in the system it's not good and it, it, it causes injuries and some people end up with like ulcers and all other type stuff, especially like from the pepper, you know, and the things we, now, you know, with the bad, it comes good. So we have some gut combinations, you know, and it says, you know, the tomatoes are rich in lyco lycopene and a pigment rich a pigment-rich antioxidant known as a carotenoid, which reduces cancer and cardiovascular disease. Fats like avocado make carotenoids more bioavailable. The organic, this orange, and look like oats or something there. I think it's oats, hope it's oats, or some cream of wheat, some, something soft. The organic compounds in both foods called phenols stabilize the LDL, that's the low density lipro, lipoprotein, or so called bad casserole when consumed together. New research shows that this com combo prevents prostate cancer, but no one is sure why. And men, it is said that. Tomatoes are very good for men. Now it's good for everybody, but for men that with the prostate, I learned that years ago. So pro, um, tomatoes are very good. So consume a little bit more. Some of us don't like eat our fruits and vegetables, and they get the broccoli there. Practice doing what God says do, and you will live healthier lives. And we have some berries and some grapes. Now I know we are taught that the berries are good for memory. Some of us, boy, we ain't even 35 and our memory ain't even good. I know sometimes I, I be saying something and I be like, what I was saying, you know? But I little over 35, but, you know? But we need to eat the things that would help us 
so our minds could truly, like it was said, to discern heavenly things, and it would proper, it would help us to be proper disciples for Jesus. Studies have shown that the antioxidant effects on consuming a combination of fruit are more than addictive, but synergistic. Then we have like the lemon and the kale. I know Sister Marlene said that, you know, we should not eat kale raw. So I pray that we'll prepare it. You know, you could, I guess, steam it down or let it do some bake, saute it. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Saute it down and enjoy it to your liking. But don't eat it raw. You can further look into the studies why not to eat it raw. Vitamin C helps make plant-based iron more absorb absorbable. And then we have, look, this look like some seeds, look like some chia seeds and some other things. I can't see too good, but turmeric. Or probably with something where it says, oh, it's turmeric. Oh, right there. Adding black pepper to turmeric. And I, I know it was said something about the black pepper. I can't explain it too good, but I think we should stay away from it. Yes. Our turmeric spice food enhances curcumin's bioavailability by 1,000 times. Pardon? Curcumin. Okay, thank you, madam. I appreciate all of your help. It's only by God's grace that, you know, I can truly do this because I've been shaking for a couple of days now. I say, Lord, you impress on me. You got to help me. And I thank God for all of your help and your participation. Comment? G'day. Uh, you mentioned but that the tomato has lycopene in it. Me personally, I don't like tomato like that. But I recently found out, like, how we take a lot of supplements. There's a supplement for that, so praise God, am I right? <laughs> I get in fast the tomato thing, though, but for any guys who don't like tomato, you ain't got no excuse. There's a supplement for that, too. Also, I think uh, watermelon also works in the same way. It has the same, uh, I'm not sure if it's as strong, but I think it has the same effect, effect? Said, or the same protein, like lycopene, in it. So you got watermelon there, too. So. Well, you got your supplements and your watermelon. No. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother BJ, for adding that. So, men, you have no excuse, eh? Be looking out for one another, right? Yes. We all got to live healthy lives because we need our men. So many are dying every day, you know? So, men, please take care of your bodies because we need you. We need you. 1 Corinthians 10.31 whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. I pray that this presentation was a blessing to you. As putting it together, I pray that, as I've mentioned before, together we can stand. But divided we will fall. Let's work together and do the work God has called us to do. God has raised this ministry for such a time as this. Please, people, press toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, and allow the Holy Spirit to truly lead you. Because once you stand for God, he will stand for you. This is just a little short little video to help us to search things.
blessing to you as it helped me in a lot of things. Now, this is the part where we got to help one another. If anyone has any other question to ask, we do so at this time before we close out in prayer. Just one more thing I'd like for you to, um, hopefully you will do in the next presentation, so I'm inviting you back. <laughs> um, the food storage, like when we cook on Friday for Sabbath, proper storage for the food for serving for the Sabbath. After Sabbath on you know, on Saturday, yeah. Okay, that's so because that's important. I've 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 had an experience where I went to eat at a person someone's house many many years ago, and I was I mean everybody was gathered and ready ready for the food, but unfortunately I don't get I guess their mode of storage was wrong, so the whole pot of rice was rot, Ooh. was spoiled, and the meat started to turn sour. Well, what it, the, it was actually veggie meat, but whatever they had in it started to sour. So it, it just, you know, we had to end up eating peanut butter and bread that day, which was good because it was a testament to the fact that, you know, you're ready to eat, eat simple. whatever was blessed. Exactly, it was simple. But it just goes to show proper storage with your food for the Sabbath is very important. Praise God. Thank you. Sister Stacy. Yes, just want to add, too, um, when we're storing food in the refrigerator, we must always be mindful. Sometimes we don't have sufficient time for that food to cool down properly. Yes, it's best that it would sit out through the night before you put it into the refrigerator because that will definitely cause the food to go sour. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Here is a suggestion for Sister Jan and others who are still using um, the cooking oil. When you're cooking your peas and rice, you don't fry with your cooking oil. You cook your peas and rice, and after it's cooked, get your cold pressed virgin um, oil and pour it over your peas and rice. Do not cook with it, okay? Mm -hmm. Do not fry with it. Thank you, ma'am. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I have a question. Let's say in my training or learning to prepare food, I didn't prepare the most palatable. Should I discard it? Or, I mean, it's edible, you know, but it's not the best tasting. Should I discard it? Or should I? Don't it? discard it. Because it's not good to waste. You know, if people out there are hungry, I agree. You try to see how best you can enhance it with something. What if I tried everything? <laughs> like I know it's certainly I know based on what I'd like to give people to eat, I wouldn't want to give that out to eat. But I also don't want to waste it. So that's why if someone asked me for a portion, I would say, No, I don't want to give you none of this. But I also don't want to waste it, so I gotta have to suffer and eat this for myself. You well, understand? you have more for today, tomorrow, and the further day. So don't and sometimes, way. if we like, you might say it may not be good to you, but give the person like you tell them and say, well, this isn't something that I want to give, but um, if you still want to try it, I'll give it to you or taste it or whatever. But leave it up to the person sometimes because. What may not be good for you may be good for me. And you know I can eat it anyway, too. <laughs> Anybody? Somebody else? Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I know you were saying don't use the oils, but our body, there are, there are oils that our body actually needs. And if you read your oils properly, you will go in the health food stores where you will see there are not oils that could be used on They'll say high heat, medium heat, or no heat at all. Olive oil, of course, should not be used for frying. Um, but I know sometimes, me and my family, we only have olive oil, we'll turn it on very low and be like, we ain't frying. But that's not right, because it shouldn't be heated. But there are walnut oil that you could fry with, and there are also grape seed oil that you could fry with. But although it says high heat, you should still put it on medium heat so it doesn't reach its smoking point. 
Okay, and I, I would say this to you, my dear. Frying is not good for any of us. We should not truly be frying our foods. But I know sometimes, you know, like me, I, I like my pancakes and thing and a little French toast and thing. But we try to just skim the pan instead of putting so much, like how we used to see back then where they put all the oil and frying so much. But um, that's, by God's grace, we, we can truly find ways to help each other to prepare things more presentable and platable for our families as you being the wife of the womb so that we could take care of the husband so he could finish school then provide, you know? We didn't want him home sick. So we got to make sure things right by God's grace. Sister Mara, I am just happy to know that you took the challenge and you've encouraged me as I am sure others are encouraged to want to learn how to do things differently and more, and more better. And with the interaction with each other, it's no shame in this game right now. We're here to learn. We're willing to learn, and we want to be the best persons we can. Be. All the glory to God. Amen. All the glory to God. It ain't nothing of me, because trust me, if it was me, I'd have still been sitting down and watching the video with y'all too. But to God be the glory. Praise Him for what He has done, He is doing, and He will continue to do. That's going to close out in prayer, because we want to further on in our service here today. Thanks. Thanks, we give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed, my soul is at rest, oh Lord, I give you thanks. Heavenly Father, I am truly grateful and thankful that you showed up and you showed out. You said, open your mouth and I will fill it. And I thank you for those who have shared and helped this presentation to go where you would have it to go today. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to encourage us and encourage me to stand for your truth, to do that which is right and pleasing in your sight. Father, you called us to a service. You said we are saved to serve. Help us to serve in the capacity which we can serve. Many of us have different talents, Lord. Help us to use this talent and not be like that servant that hide the, even the one talent that you give us. Father, help us, Jesus. We know that you can do exceeding abundantly above all that we can even ask or think. So today, God, Father, help us to hear your voice and help us to obey and to do those things which is right and pleasing in your sight. Thank you for allowing me to be used by you. And I pray, Lord, that you continue to grant me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that I will truly rightly divide the word of truth that none of us here will be ashamed. It's my prayer with thanksgiving. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.